Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, I got a little project that I thought I'd share with you guys today. I've been uh, working on some of my lathes over here and one of the things I got is my badges, all the little tags and stuff that come off the machines. And uh, I'm in the process of restoring these and I have done some of these in the past and uh, I thought I would show you guys uh, the, the process for doing because I'm doing things just a little bit different this time. Uh, and I think you might enjoy seeing it. So let's zoom in here and show you these. Well, here's some of the badges that we're going to be working on today. Most of these are off of my big 28-inch uh, Monarch. Uh, got one here off the Model K, the 16-inch Monarch. But um, all of them need to be restored. And, and step one uh, when working on these tags is getting them cleaned up. And I've never really had a really good way of doing that. And I tried something new this time. It really worked out good. Uh, it wasn't something I was able to do myself, but uh, Jeff Horton, who is uh, one of my viewers and had uh, volunteered to help me out on a little part before where he used a process called vapor blasting to uh, actually clean some parts. And what I ended up doing was just sending these out to him and he did the vapor blasting on these tags. Now I'm gonna put a picture in here kind of showing what these things look like when we started with. Uh, many of them have been painted over multiple times. They were dirty, greasy, grimy, you name it. Uh, they just did not look very well. And uh, when I sent them out to Jeff, uh, he was able to put them in his vapor blasting system and come in here and just clean them right up. Now, I don't really, I've never actually done or seen the vapor blasting before myself, but my understanding is, is that they're, they use a liquid honing type material. So it has a very fine abrasive in a liquid and they're able to go in here and just kind of go over these things. And it, it, it cleans stuff up very nicely, but it doesn't really damage the material or pit the material like a, a sandblaster would. Uh, which would, you know, probably the more typical way that I'd go about doing it because that's what I have access to as a blasting cabinet. But these turned out absolutely just great. I'm really, really happy with these. And uh, now the challenge though is to get in here and get them painted uh, so that we can um, see all the, the highlights on here and have them ready to go back on the machine. So as for painting these and getting the, the color back into them, you know, what I'm gonna do this, this time, well, I'm gonna do part of it the same way as I did before, where we just go in here and I'm just gonna spray paint them with an enamel paint. Most of these just have a black background and then of course all the raised stuff is, uh, is polished off and left the, the natural color. Uh, but I got a couple of these that are actually two-toned. Uh, this badge and this badge both have black and a green in it. And then uh, this Monarch Model K, it's all a green color on the background. I don't have a spray paint uh, for that, that color. So uh, we're going to set those aside and we're going to actually hand paint those uh, again using some enamel paint, but uh, it's going to be a little bit more work to get that done. But I think first thing we're going to do is just take these over here, the ones that are going to be solid black. I'm just going to spray paint them on there real quick. First thing I'm going to say here is that I really like these badges that Monarch uses because they are really the letters and stuff are really raised up high and the metal is a fairly thick metal. I mean, some of these things are, I mean, that's almost a quarter of an inch thick. Some of these are, some of them are a little bit thinner, but still the raised part is got really high letters in them there, which really makes it easy to get in here and clean these things up. A lot of the tags that I've done in the past is on some really thin brass stock and uh, it can be challenging sometimes just to get that, those high spots uh, highlighted on there. Uh, these are a lot easier. So I'm just using a uh, Rust-Oleum, it's, a, it's a, an enamel paint. I'm using a gloss black on these and we'll just uh, come in here and give them a good coat of paint. All right, I don't want to get on there too thick, so um, we're just going to let this dry probably overnight, and uh, we'll work on starting to clean these up tomorrow. So I've been doing some research here, trying to look at colors. I went online, got on the internet, and started looking at original uh, tags, as close as I could tell, so machines that hadn't been repainted. And if you look here, this is that Monarch name badge. That was a slightly different style, but I've looked. It's the same on, the, on this style, too. But you see the top part up here is kind of a, a dark green, whereas the bottom is black. So we kind of got a two-tone thing going on there. Uh, there's another look showing that same badge there. 
And then down here, if you look uh, on this badge, that, that top row there is green. Uh, there's a, a line there, you can kind of see it. That, this, this is a metric badge instead of the one I've got, but again, the same thing. I'm seeing this repeatedly. I just found some pictures that I could uh, kind of see it on. So, um, And then the Model K badge, it's got that same green color in the background. There's no black in it at all. So that's kind of our game plan here is to go ahead and get these things painted up. And uh, once again, we're going to use Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. I'm using a can this time, and then uh, we're using a Hunter Green for the green color. Uh, I don't know if you first one got in the view or not, but uh, Hunter, uh, Gloss Black and Hunter Green. But anyway, I'm going to get the paint brushes out, and uh, we'll start painting these. I think I'm going to start on the Model K right here and uh, we'll just start painting her. Lay that paint down in there. I'm not too worried. I'm gonna go back in here and we're gonna clean these things up as far as the getting up, you know, the outside, the raised areas painted. So I'm not too worried about whether I get a little bit up on them or not. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm gonna probably try to stay between the lines as good as I can, but uh, we'll clean all that up later anyway. An artist I am not. Um, anything but. But uh, we're going to be an artist today, whether we want to or not. Probably going to have to go back and make a second pass on some of this. Just, just not wanting to spread real evenly in some places, but we're going to get, get it painted. Coming along, though. Again, this is not my cup of tea. I am not. I've got a lot of patience, but this kind of stuff just drives me crazy. All right, I'm not going to win any awards for painting between the lines there, but uh, like I said, we'll clean that up later. Set that one aside. And uh, hmm, I think we'll do this one next. And this one, just this little top area gets painted green. And then we'll paint the bottom one black in a little bit. So um, this one's a little bit different type of badge too. It's uh, letters aren't quite as raised as high. Looks like we got a little bit more texture. The paint's wanting to grab a hold to it a little bit better, which is good. I'm just going to paint right over the letters. I'm not going to worry about it. Like I said, we're going to come in there and we'll scrape all the paint off of those letters later, later on uh, after the paint dries. So. Man, I think that's got that one. And on this one, the only ones that get painted are the little letters, or excuse me, numbers up here at the top. All right, let's got that. And the rest of this gets this nice uh, contrasting black. Black paint is uh, spreading much easier. All right, we can set that one aside to dry. One more down, and I'm going to go back in here and maybe uh, try to touch up that green a little bit in a couple places, and we're going to set these aside and let them dry. All right, so we let this uh, paint dry. I've actually already kind of worked the edges on a couple of these. I'm going to show you the process I use, and uh, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, well, these two are done. I've still got a little bit of finessing to do on this one, uh, but you can see how things are turning out. 
Uh, I will comment that I'm not crazy about where I hand painted this. I didn't really get a very smooth background in there. I mean, it is what it is, and I'm probably just going to live with it. Uh, but if I had to do this again, I probably would have just found some green spray paint that I could have painted on there and got an even coat. Uh, I was just not able to spread that out as evenly as I thought I could with that brush. Uh, it, it, I mean, I think it looks fine, but it could look better. Uh, this tag here, I've already kind of uh, polished it up a little bit, but this tag was really beat up pretty bad. And when I sanded it, I've kind of got some places where it's shiny and not so shiny behind it. And I had to come in with a razor and kind of scrape some of those. Um, and I want to try to get in here and kind of polish out some of these areas that are down low by hand. So I got a little bit more finessing to do on that one. This one here came out real nice and uh, it's ready to go. So anyway, let me uh, take you over here and I want to show you the process of getting that, the high spots here kind of polished out so that they shine and look good after you paint them. And uh, it's a pretty simple process. And these tags here make it really easy to do that on because these Monarch tags are thick and they're really raised up high and, and most of these tags are not really beat up except for this one. Anytime you have one that's been bent or you know got waves in it, it makes that sanding process a little bit more difficult. If it's flat and it's got good height behind it, uh, it usually works pretty good. So let me go over to the lapping plate and I'll show you how we're gonna sand those out. So I've got a cast iron surface plate here. Um, this one is not anything that's super precision, but I, I tend to use it a lot for lapping and things like that. Or at least that's my plan, just to use it for lapping. Uh, when I say lapping, probably not precision lapping in this case. At some point I may scrape this thing in and get it really good and flat, but right now it's kind of unknown as to how flat it actually is, but flat enough for what we're doing. Anyway, I took some 220 sandpaper and we kind of just glued them down to this. I just used this uh, 3M Super 77 a spray adhesive. You just spray it on there and stick it down. It cleans up real nice and easy after you're done. And let me grab one of these tags. We'll do this one here. I think that one's gonna look really nice uh, when it's done. But I'm just gonna turn it over now. And come in here and you can already see that paint coming off on the sandpaper. It's a bit hard to grip these things without sanding your fingers. And you can already see it's a little bit high in the middle, but you can really see how those uh, numbers are just popping right out of there. So let me, uh, let me work on this a little bit. Ideally, you could just do the whole thing flat, but reality is, is that it's not perfectly flat, so I'm kind of moving it around a little bit, only doing parts of it at a time. That seems to kind of help out here a little bit. But you can see how quickly that's coming into shape. So let me, uh, let me work on this a little bit more, and I'll be back and show you what it looks like. All right, this is turning out nice. Um, I've still got just a little bit down here on these, the bottom edge, and there's a couple little places in here. This is just a little sanding block I've got. I uh, just picked this up at Lowe's and it's got, you can just Velcro or whatever, these little sanding pads, but you can kind of come in here and really focus on some areas with this. And uh, with this one having such high raised numbers on it, I really don't have to worry too much about scratching it. It's, there's not a big area for me to get down below the surface on, so it works out really nice. And I think we about got it here. You know, if I want to, I can get in there with my razor blade and just kind of, there's a few little numbers in here that probably just need to be scratched out, but uh, you know, I think that's pretty well done. I'll take some mineral spirits in a rag and wipe that dust off of there and it'll really pop. Here we go, another one. It says Flame Hardened Ways, Monarch Lathe Bed. So uh, let's polish this one up real quick.
pretty happy with the way that one turned out. And we'll clean it up a little bit more. I may focus on a few little areas in there, but that looks good. All right, I'm gonna do it to the rest of them and I will bring you back again and show you what they look like. Well guys, that was pretty short work there. It wasn't too much trouble. Uh, I think everything looks good. Between the sanding on the plate and then coming here and block sanding and then the final thing I had to do in a few places was take like a little razor blade in here and just kind of come in here and, you know, scrape out a little bit of paint off of a few little places and I've still got a few more of those I need to do just to clean up some little low spots that, uh, you know, little dents in the metal or whatever where it just didn't quite clean up. But uh, we're getting really close here. And the final step after we do that is I'll wipe everything down. Mineral spirits get all the sanding dust and stuff out from the background. And then I take these over and I shoot them with a clear coat. And the main reason I do that is to protect the, the shiny metal on these to keep them from tarnishing and changing colors over time. And uh, once that's done, let it dry. These tags are ready to go back onto the machine. But I think for this video, this is gonna be pretty much be a wrap. I do need to come in here on this tag and I gotta do some polishing in some areas. This one, like I said before, was a little bit beat up, but the rest of these I think are ready to hit with a clear coat and we'll let that dry. And I'll probably try to get these uh, tags, start putting some tags back on the machine here in the next couple of days, but wanted to share my process for restoring tags and all in all, I think they turned out real nice. Well, that's it guys. That is the process I'm using now to restore these tags. And again, you see, see basically how we do it. It's uh, not rocket science. It just takes a little patience, a little bit of time, uh, a little bit of attention to detail. And uh, you can do these. These again are a little bit easier because they are raised up so high. Some of the Thinner tags can be a little bit more challenging than this, but the process is still basically the same. So with that, again, that's going to be a wrap. So uh, we'll catch you next time around. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.